Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. It's a very beautiful and sunny day here at Aoyama Park next to the Tokyo National Art Center. And it's been sunny all day long, which is uh, something of a miracle uh, so far this July where every single day we've had at least a little bit of rain. And yeah, quite nice. Uh, I, I'm not sure what is happening uh, this year to the weather in, in Japan and Asia in particular. We're getting a lot of rain this year and not so much heat. The last nice day that I came out here, we had a few hours of sunshine during the day and I said that it was 32 degrees and the hottest day of the year. And we haven't had another day close to that warm since. Uh, not a single day since then has it gotten over 28 degrees. And in July, I find myself wearing a sweater in the evenings when I'm out and about, which is uh, really unusual here. Another sign that is quite cool this summer is the lack of noise. Normally, the cicadas are out in full strength this time of year in Japan. And I can't make a video in this park because there are just too many of them uh, making too much noise. It's quite silent here, so uh, uh, I like the silence, but still, uh, I wish that uh, summer would hurry up and eventually get here. Uh, summer is our favorite time of year, uh, my family's favorite time of year. We usually spend a lot of time uh, at the beach in the summertime. I grew up in Southern California and I love the ocean and I love surfing. Though I don't do a lot of surfing here, I do like going to the beach and uh, swimming and uh, teaching my daughter to swim. Since we haven't had any good days to go to the beach so far in June or July, we've been going to a swimming pool every night and I've been teaching my daughter to swim there. Uh, there's a club nearby which has a beautiful uh, indoor pool on the top floor and we've been going there pretty much uh, most nights for the past few weeks where I've been uh, teaching my daughter to swim and she's starting to get the hang of it. I really like this pool because it's located on the top floor and it has a wonderful view of the Tokyo cityscape. Uh, you can swim and enjoy the view of the skyline and outside there's something of a cafe and a snack bar where you can get snacks and drinks and enjoy the city lights and have a nice view of Tokyo Tower. It's a great place to come and hang out but all the same uh, I hope that the weather eventually turns around and gets warm and summer like so we can go to the beach. Anyway. Uh, today's video is going to be about a Minolta rangefinder camera and in this case it's going to be the Minolta A2 which dates from around uh, I think 1955 or 1956. Uh, Minolta produced rangefinder cameras beginning in the 1940s and most of their rangefinder cameras uh, around the time the A2 and A were produced were uh, interchangeable lens Leica copy rangefinder cameras. Uh, they used a Leica L mount lens and a Leica style focal plane shutter and they were quite interesting and well-made cameras uh, but they were still something of a copy of the Leica cameras. Minolta decided to make uh, a fully in-house design rangefinder camera uh, something uh, I guess I, I'm not sure I, if I can honestly say it was uh, a less expensive or uh, easier to manufacture camera. When I compare uh, a camera like the A or A2 to an LTM camera, uh, I, 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 uh, I tend to think that these are per perhaps made a little bit better. But on the other hand, uh, the shutter mechanism in an LTM camera is a little bit harder to manufacture and set up than the leaf shutter lens which comes in, I guess, the fixed lens rangefinder cameras. Uh, the Minolta A was very similar to A2 with a similar uh, outline and shape and controls, uh, but the A featured a simpler lens and a uh, more limited range of shutter speeds. The A2 came out with an improved lens and also with an option for an f2.8, you know, a faster lens than the standard f3.5, and added the shutter, maximum shutter speed of what up to 1 400th of a second. Uh, these are quite well-made cameras. This camera, as I said, was made in 1955 or 1956, and despite its age, it still looks to be in quite remarkable shape. Uh, the materials in these camera are, cameras are quite high quality, as is the workmanship. Uh, despite this, the age of this camera, the leatherette still looks really nice and shiny. The chrome finish doesn't have any corrosion or deterioration in it. Everything looks quite nice. Uh, you can tell that the camera is a little bit odd compared to other rangefinder cameras. It looks a bit like a, an American football from the top. And it's quite thick in the center between uh, you know, the, the rear of the camera and the front of the lens element. And that is because the shutter is fit inside the body of the camera. Uh, not, 
not the kind of leaf shutter that you find on later rangefinder cameras where the lens and shutter and all that are integrated into a unit which is attached to the front of the camera. Uh, the shutter in this camera is internal. And uh, it, it's, it's a simple and interesting and reliable design. Uh, the, the leaf shutters are much more reliable than the focal plane shutters which came in the Leica style cameras. But unfortunately they, they were kind of limited in their speeds. Uh, the A having uh, one uh, two hundredth uh, of a second maximum speed and one four hundredth of a second in the A2. Uh, the lenses are quite nice. The row cores that came in here, the uh, say Chio Core row core lens. This camera has the optional 45 millimeter f 2.8 lens, but it has it doesn't have the optional 1 500 second of a shutter. So, kind of an interesting camera. Not all of these are alike. Uh, some of them have different options, and it, it's when you hunt around with them, it's kind of uh, fun to see if you can find the correct uh, shutter and lens combination that you're looking for. We'll go ahead and take a look at the features, the controls, and functions of the Minolta A2, starting at the top, where we have the film rewind knob, which you can lift up to make it uh, a little easier to rewind. We have the shoe for mounting your flash gun, and if you mount an old bulb or strobe flash, you, you mount it here, and then you would attach your flash sync cable to this socket located on the front. Uh, next to the flash shoe, you have the shutter speed dial, which is uh, arranged in this position because of the location of the shutter itself. And also because uh, Minolta manufactured a selenium light meter, which you would slide onto the flash shoe and which engaged the shutter speed dial. And it was a coupled light meter, which allowed you to uh, quickly and easily uh, measure the light. And as you adjusted the light meter, it would automatically set the shutter and you would of course adjust the aperture speed to what it was recommended. So uh, quite interesting the way that is set up. On the front here we have this Minolta A2 nameplate which is secured with two screws. If you remove these two screws and lift off the nameplate you will find the access holes for the rangefinder adjustment. Uh, the horizontal adjustment will be located around where the M is here on the nameplate and the vertical adjustment will be back here between the A and the 2. So quite easy to adjust the rangefinder on one of these cameras. Uh, here we have the uh, shutter release button, which will accept a standard cable release. And here we have the film winding and shutter charging button. On the back of the camera, we don't really have anything other than the viewfinder eyepiece. On the front of the camera, we find the more important controls. First, we have a switch on the side here, which you can select between the X sync speed for the flash and uh, the manual operation. It really doesn't seem to matter which uh, one you uh, choose. The shutter seems to fire this uh, properly regardless of the setting. Uh, here we have the focusing tab and we have a focusing scale on the side here which is measured in meters which is rather odd since most of the cameras uh, from this era were measured in feet. And we have a depth of field scale located here uh, uh, conveniently to allow you to line up your depth of field with your uh, focus distance. Uh, we have a self timer located here on the bottom and on the front here you adjust the aperture by turning the front of the, uh, the lens element so quite easy to to do. And the row core lens, the 45 mm f2.8 is the better of the lenses which came in these cameras. It was a five element lens and a really excellent performer. Uh, one which was uh, shared later on with the uh, Super A camera. I happen to have an old Super A right here, which uh, uh, has a similar design lens, though it's a 5 centimeter lens in this particular camera. You can kind of see the similarity between the A2 and the Super A. The main difference with the Super A is its interchangeable uh, lens system. On the bottom of the camera, we have the film counting dial, which you have to reset by turning it. Once you reach the end of the film and you uh, load a new uh, film cartridge inside, you will have to reset this manually to start the counter over again. The leatherette on the bottom here has a little bit of mold on it, but uh, that's because it was sitting in its case, so easy enough to clean that off. This here is the rewind button, so you depress this button and it disengages the winding mechanism, which allows you to then rewind the film. And on the side here we have a, a standard quarter inch tripod socket. And Minolta put in this really convenient foot on the bottom which allows you to sit the camera and allow it to sit flat, otherwise it would kind of fall on its nose. 
loading the film in this A2 is quite easy. On the bottom, on the one side here, we have a lever which you pull down to release the film door. And it's quite an attractive camera even on the inside. A wonderful finish inside. Uh, to load the film, you would lift up the film winding dial, drop your film canister, push this back down to hold the film cartridge in place, pull your film leader over the film chamber here and feed it into the take-up spool and then wind it until the film engages the teeth on the sprocket here in the holes on either side of the film. Then you would close the film door and you would reset your film counter dial on the bottom and uh, to the S setting and then rewind it till the first frame comes up and the camera is ready to shoot. Overall these are really interesting cameras with a superb lens, uh, very similar to the LTM lenses which you could find on the interchangeable lens rangefinder cameras. Uh, the Super A's I, I tend to come across from time to time, though not a whole lot. Uh, they're quite reliable cameras and they don't really have any uh, issues. Uh, certain cameras tend to have certain issues with reliability or things like that. The only weakness I can find in the Super A is the beam splitting mirror for the, the rangefinder, which is very fragile and which will certainly rub away uh, if you attempt to clean it. If you're going to clean out uh, the rangefinder and viewfinder assembly on this camera, it's not a difficult job to do, though there are a couple of things you have to be careful of. Uh, to remove the top cover to clean it off, uh, you have to lift up on uh, the film rewind dial and remove this screw here and this collar and uh, the, the knob will come off and the lower part of the shaft will fall inside the camera. So make sure to put the three pieces in a safe place. Uh, then you would remove the two screws on the top cover on either end and the screw on the back here. The next thing you have to do is remove the film winding lever and this is where you have to be really careful. You have to remove this screw on the top using a lens spanner or pointed tool. When you take this off, you'll find two screws inside which hold on uh, the uh, winding lever. When you remove these screws, you have to be careful not to lift up on the lever uh, because the lever is attached to the film winding shaft on the inside and if you pull the lever up and it pulls the shaft up, it disengages uh, the pulse which uh, you, know, you can kind of hear the mechanical gear sound. If the shaft gets pulled away from the poles, that stops working and also the spring which pulls back the winding lever tends to come off. So when you remove the two screws, make sure to push down. There's a hole right in the center where this center screw goes. Push down on that with the screwdriver, holding it firmly down as you remove the two screws and lift off of the film winding lever. When you put it back on, you're kind of going to have to wind it a little bit to add tension and you have to be a little bit creative with a couple of screwdrivers to kind of hold uh, the tension on the mechanism and lower the arm back down before you attach the screws and put the screw back on the top. Otherwise every, it's, it's quite a simple job other than dealing with the winding mechanism. Anyway, I'll be listing this camera for sale on my uh, new uh, online store, uh, japanvintagecamera.com and I'll also list it on my Etsy and eBay stores. So if you're interested in buying this camera or another vintage Japanese camera, uh, please check out my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. I'll be posting uh, more videos about uh, photography in Japan, vintage Japanese cameras and stuff like that. So if you're interested in seeing those, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.